G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope you are super well. Today we're here to talk about this, the Blue Eti AC70. What is this grey box all about? Well, for those that haven't seen portable battery storage before, it's not like a regular little battery that you might carry around with you that you can plug into your phone or into your cameras, maybe to light a few things up but they are pretty low powered. This, and as we can see here by these two plugs, allowing you to just plug your regular wall socket straight into the device. Along with that, it has two USB-C high powered ports and two USB-A ports, giving you a huge amount of connectivity. And later on in this video, I will show you the cool Bluetooth app for this device from Bluetti. Now it can be charged from the mains. We have a plug here. It's got a great rubber bottom on it, this thing. It doesn't slide. There's no chance of it sliding off. Kettle plug, which is used for computers and all sorts of devices, just goes straight in there, charges from your house, and you can get things going. But also what comes in the box includes a cigarette lighter or a 12 volt for your car that you can plug in along with the capacity, which I hope to show you in another episode, to charge via solar panels. So you're literally set up on a sunny day like today and the whole thing charges with solar. What are these things good for? Well, they're definitely good for if there's blackouts and I've absolutely used these during blackouts to keep my fridge running for a few hours just to top it up to get it to cool down. This most recent summer we had two rolling outages and we were without power for one of them for about eight hours and another one for about two hours and i was able to plug in portable battery storage to give the fridge a top up and to make sure cell phones were still working and to charge up any lighting we had so it's perfect for blackouts they're obviously also great for things like camping if you're ever off grid and you want to keep all of your electronic devices running. I mean, you can even plug a small television set, laptops, all those sorts of things in. For example, if you had something like Starlink, you could plug that into this. You can charge it up during the day, the battery, and then still use it into the night. Media usage, so content creators, TV crews, etc. This is a great way to plug in your regular wall socket devices. So that might be an array of say battery dock chargers, or it might be certain lighting. Or for example, I have my black magic switching gear that requires you to plug it into the wall. I mean, more and more things are running off batteries, but there's still plenty of devices that would prefer to run off a wall socket. For content creation, and crews of any type. And of course, these batteries come in all sorts of sizes. This is one of the smaller ones. You can get way bigger ones, two, three times the size and have portable power with you. It's pretty amazing. And of course, things like the fact that you can be driving to a location and topping this up from your vehicle, that's fantastic and the solar, as we've mentioned already. This unit is 768 watt hours, two times 230 volts, and 4.3 amp, or 1,000 watts in total per hour. The maximum output is 950 watts. So, for example, if you plugged your vacuum cleaner that might run at something like 2,400 watts, they are some of the heaviest things that we use around our houses. You, you can't run that off this. And, th and that's fair enough because it would drain it really quickly. So there are some limits. Kettles, for example, you can get low, lower wattage kettles. So if that's something that you want to have in the field with you, then you've got to just look at the sort of power it requires. This particular battery, as I said, it's a smaller one. It doesn't, it's not a catch-all battery, this one, but it catches a lot. It can charge at a maximum of 500 watts per hour from solar. So that means if you have a 500 watt portable solar panel, of which I'm hoping to show you soon, there goes the sun, just as we're talking about solar, but it'll be back, then you can, you can get this fully charged by the sun in something like an hour and a half. A lot of these sort of batteries do slow down a little bit as they get towards the end of the charging, as in 80, 90, and 100%. But in theory, you could charge it quite quickly at 500 watts. So that's that's pretty impressive that 
if you have a charging mat of that size, you just need to have it out in the sun for a couple of hours and you're done. You're ready to go with your camping or your trip or whatever you're doing. This technology, and I've been looking at this technology for something like five years, it just keeps getting better and better. And I think for me, the most important thing about these batteries these days is actually ensuring, for example, this one, it can be recharged 3000 times. So that's a lot. If you were to charge it daily, that is something like eight or nine years. You know, you might not quite do it every day, but let's say you do it 300 times a year, which is almost daily. You can charge it 3000 times. That's 10 years. What I want to see with these batteries is that they are still working actually in 10 years and there are not other aspects of them that fail. So that's something that we can only test over time. And what I will endeavor to do is to use this and charge this something like five times a week and see, see how it's going in a year and in five years time. Because that's what's critical about it. Those numbers are irrelevant if the whole construction doesn't last. I believe this is well made. It feels well made. I like the quality of the plastics. It's got this great rubber mat underneath, so it really does stick to the table. Buttons here and all of these coverings, they're fine. Obviously, this is not weather sealed. You can't leave this in the rain. Not at all. Just be mindful of that. You've got to keep it out of rain and moisture. And I would also keep it out of dust and sand and grit. You know, if there's a sand storm coming, stick it in the boot of your car. Just make sure you keep this thing out of the elements. Now, of course, these things are batteries and they do have some weight that comes with them. If you're bringing a whole bunch of electricity with you, what's the cost in that weight-wise? This is 10.2 kilograms, 22.5 pounds. Now, this is an LIF EPO4 battery type, which I believe is the type of battery that doesn't have the same sort of memory as we've found in some batteries. And so you can charge them to full and they, as we've discussed, they should last longer than some other types of batteries where they say you might get 500 recharges or 1,000 recharges. Again, this is stating 3,000 recharges, or as they call it, 3,000 cycles. Now, to give you an idea, they're suggesting here in their charts that you could run, say, a rice cooker for 2.9 hours, or, for example, a 220-watt projector for 2.7 hours. You can put power in through your solar, through that port, and through your... This is a cigarette lighter style. So if you've got, if you've got objects that want to run off the 12-volt cigarette lighter style, they go in there. What I love about this is it will show you exactly how much power is being used. The USB port is currently utilizing 86 watts and this battery at that draw will last for another 1.2 hours. And if I have over a look over here on the laptop that the battery power is increasing. That's what I love about these sorts of things is that they can keep you going. I can also plug in my mobile phone and we will see that the draw will increase from the 86. Now what it does do is it might try and level things out, but it's gone up by around 10 watts. The phone is having a conversation and this is what iPhones do. They're very smart. They, they like to talk about what they're doing. So that's drawing at another almost 20 watts, and we can see that the runtime has dropped now to an hour instead of 1.2. And you might be able to hear it, but the fan in there is going a little bit. As you can see, we could still have two more plugs in here, USB-A. My laptop here has just gone from 39% to 42% just in a very short amount of time. So these devices have the potential for fast charging if you have the right cable. And I've got the right cable here. Really super duper useful stuff when you're in the field. This, this is a lot of power which will run multitudinous cameras. It'll run your phone. It'll run your laptop. Essentially, you would be able to be off grid for a few days and run lots of electronics with a device like this. And if you were able to solar back up, well, depending on how much sunlight you get, you could be indefinitely off-grid, charging during the day and then running lighting 
computers, whatever else you might want to run. Okay, well, my laptop has gone from 39 to 45% in just a few minutes. My phone is charging and I could have numerous other things plugged in as well as be charging from the sun all at the same time if I wanted to be topping up this battery. I really like these devices for family situations, holiday situations, camping situations, or as a photographer and filmmaker when you're on location. And you might, for example, leave this in the boot of your car, or for me, I've got a van, I leave it in the back of the van and I can be charging basically everything and anything that I have. What I love about this type of battery specifically is that we have the wall socket. And what that means is, is you don't have to adapt devices that don't run, that aren't powered off USB-C. They're not powered off the PD standard, but they're just powered off the standard wall socket. So this just makes different types of charging, all different types of charging that we have pretty much today possible in one unit. I don't think there's really anything that either isn't 240 volts, USB-C or USB-A. There would be almost no device that doesn't have at least one of those three options, along with that fourth one, which is the, the 12 volt cigarette lighter style charging. Okay, so what we're doing here is starting with the battery being charged from the wall socket. Now what we're gonna do is turn on the USB charging and we have a V-mount battery connected along with the Z9. Now we can see the Z9's just come online and also the V-mount battery. Uh, the Z9 only takes about 15 watts and the V-mount goes a lot harder, so we're up at 74 watts. If we remove the Z9, you'll see that drops by about 15, which there it has. And so we'll plug the Z9 back in. That will start charging again and come up to speed. And it will equalize itself out. It'll work itself out there. Now, also in this top plug here, we have my studio light. Okay, so what we've got to do to turn that on is to Get the AC going, there's the light, and we can see now that both DC and AC power is running. Down here on the phone, how much power that we're drawing. So there we are at 50% on the studio light. We're gonna go up to 100%. We've gone from 31 watts to 62 watts, which we can see there on the AC. The battery is now taking 280 watts from the grid in order to equalize what's going on along with trying to charge at the same time. So that's good to see that increase and trying to ensure that the pass through is coming through. Now, of course, the other thing that I wanted to show you here with all of this is that there's this really cool Bluetooth app. And we can see here that there's no solar coming in at the moment, but we can remote control so we can turn off for example the AC which will turn the light off and there you go that's really cool turn it back on so you can do that from your phone you can also and this is Bluetooth you can just have a look at how your particular battery is going these things sometimes do get warm that's what happens with batteries and it does have a fan but the fan is very quiet so it's not really much of a problem from my perspective definitely do not cover your ventilation grill thank you so much for joining me for this brief overview of the blue etty ac70 great portable power for all sorts of usages as i said for blackouts for content creators also for camping or various other off-grid lifestyle activities. These things are useful. They're just getting more and more affordable. This unit is currently on sale here in Australia. And of course you will find it in other parts of the world. I'd love to know what your thoughts are around this style of portable power storage. Have you used these? Do you have them? What do you think of them? All right, it's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again, so please do subscribe, please share, and please like. Bye for now.